Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. I'm going to continue talking about radiation uh, and what you should do. This is not a complete how to survive, but this is just more so you know. I'm not going to get into the really technical data because you will not understand it and it won't serve a purpose. I'm going to just tell you what to do if a nuclear attack occurs in this country, be it a terrorist attack of an individual nuclear weapon going off or uh, an attack from a foreign country with a, either a missile or smuggling in a large nuclear weapon. So no technical data, just what should you do? All right, the uh, nuclear attack has occurred, a nuclear weapon has gone off. It's a few things you need to think about. If you have the earth here and the, the bomb is sent over by delivery system, there's two things that can happen, actually three. They can make that nuclear weapon, that missile, detonate after it hits the ground. And that's going to be used for if there's a command and control bunker there or a silo. They want the missile to get as far into the earth before the nuclear detonation goes off. Or you can make it blow up as soon as it hits the ground. Contact. Or you can make the weapon blow up here, above the earth above the ground and what we'll do is it will do more destruction this way um, it will create a lot less radiation the radiation dust that we see in movies is caused by when the bomb hits everything down here be it vehicles people uh, buildings vegetation trees um, at ground zero will turn into dust um, this dust will be picked up by the mushroom cloud, the effects of the blast, and that is your typical mushroom cloud. So inside that mushroom cloud is particles of dust. It will look like ash falling from the sky. What happens is the wind, so wherever the wind is blowing, will take the dust and start spreading the dust. Now, how far is the dust going to spread? It depends on weather conditions. If it starts raining immediately right here, that rain will force the dust to the ground. So it won't spread as far. If there's no rain, uh, it will be carried by the weather conditions that are there, the wind. So if you are downrange from a nuclear blast, you're going to expect dust. Radioactive particles will be falling. That is when, if you have to be outside either to secure supplies, uh, secure children from school, make sure you protect your skin. If you have no rain suit, anything will do. Putting extra clothes on so you can take those clothes off when you get to where you're going to take shelter. Take those clothes off and that will remove a lot of the radiation particles. Okay, so you're at your house and a nuclear weapon goes off. You finally realize, hey, that was a nuke. Uh, maybe there is some communication with the TV and radio saying, hey, there's been a large explosion over this certain city. What do you do? This video will tell you there's not going to be time to break out your books and start reading or get on the internet. You need to know your basics right now. So first of all, nuclear attack has occurred. You probably need to secure food, water, and move it into your safest location of your house. You, most people do not have a designated shelter, so you're going to make a shelter. Basically what you're going to do is take everything in your house, find the central location of your house if you have no basement, be it a hallway or a bathroom, and you're going to pile everything you have around that room inside the room and outside the walls. Try to take doors, interior doors off, and use those as like big sheets of plywood that you can put over top of you. So let's say you have a couple dressers. Put a couple dressers right here inside the room. Take your doors and lay this way. What this will do is it will protect a little alcove here for you to, to get in. Now yes, you're not gonna be able to, to stand up in this, but you'll be able to lay down and, and sit. Then that's what you wanna do. So, we're in this little room here. What you're going to do is take everything you own. Dressers, suitcases, boxes of books, uh, fish tanks full of water. If you have time, maybe dirt, potted plants. And you're going to build a bunker around your position. What you're going to do is try to create as much mass or density to keep the radiation from getting you. The radiation will start particles will start falling. Now if you're at ground zero or very close you're gonna get a lot of radiation. You're gonna get radiation that you're really not gonna see the dust. <clears throat> that is sort of a different whole 
uh, subject, but we're talking about people that are downrange far enough that the initial radiation that is dispersed from the nuke, uh, that's not gonna affect you. It's gonna be the particles falling. So you're gonna take everything you can find and you're gonna make a, a bunker, just like you did when you were a kid with sheets and pillows. You're, you're trying to get as much mass around your position and around yourself. Now, let's say you have kids. Put the kids in the center and put the adults on the outside. The adults will actually act as a shielding agent for the children so you've got more mass there. So you are protecting the children over yourself. Now the radiation is going to fall. The particles are going to fall on top of your roof. And then they're going to blow down and get on the ground. Even if they stay up here, you are you have an advantage because there's distance. Yes, you don't have the mass, but you have the distance from the source to you, and that's a good thing. So if you live in an apartment building that's uh, four or five stories tall, and you live on like the third floor, that is good. The first floor is not as good because what will happen is all the radiation will fall to the ground level, and if your apartment's on the ground level, you're gonna feel a more effect from that. So if you can get, move up a little bit, uh, second, third story, fourth story maybe, being in the center of the building is what you want. You don't want to be on the very top floor because what will happen is the radiation, if it's a flat roof complex, will fall on top of the roof and it'll be right above your head. So get into the center of your apartment building and build your shelter. Take your food and water in there and, and this, will, this will definitely help you out. Is this the best, best thing? No. Um, but this is the best thing you can do under the circumstances. Now, if you have a designated survival shelter that's ready for nuke, nuclear attack against the United States or radiation, yeah, they get in that. But most people don't have it. So you can improvise um, whatever you can do to pile stuff around. R radiation, you're not going to see it, you're not going to smell it. Um, but you will feel the effects of it. Um, there's a lot of technical data I can get into. I'm not going to do that. It'll bore you to death and you'll turn the, turn the video off and you won't learn anything. So, build a shelter inside your house. The threat of this is, I don't know. No one knows. Uh, terrorists acquire nuclear weapons, then we'll be in trouble. It will probably be more like a local attack. So the people at the ground zero will really feel it. People a few hundred miles away will have time to react. The uh, particles are not going to just very quickly come to you. It might take a few hours because it's going to be blown by the wind currents. So if you're at a good location, um, the, the radiation particles fallout might blow away from you. Uh, so you need to know the wind direction and what was attacked. I, I hope this helped. I just want to put a few minutes out here. If it gets too long, you're going to cut it off. You're not going to learn anything. So what I want you to know is much mass and stuff you own piled around you. The more the better. Thanks for watching.